Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. Today's episode is the culmination of over a year and a half of trying and mostly failing to make a meaningful dyno to measure the real power of drills for both peak torque, which many brands advertise in inch pounds, and watts of working power, which is what DeWalt uses as they say it's a better metric and we think it can be useful to measure too. Though it does make comparing between brands like these two in the specs pretty much impossible until today. So we're gonna do four things here. Compare the torque this Milwaukee drill advertises versus what it objectively and precisely makes on our new dyno break, because we think specs on these tools from most brands have become as inflated or more than other tool categories we test. Then two, measure this DeWalt's drill torque in the same fashion because lately they refuse to advertise torque. Three, measure both tools working output in watts. This is basically the sort of horsepower part of the equation. Not to compare to any specs per se, as there's efficiency losses when running these motors as generators to produce watts, but to see which tool has the most beans at RPM. Then lastly, four, see how much a different battery makes a difference on these tools, and specifically with DeWalt's Flexful Advantage drill, does using flexful batteries that it's advertised as being tuned for make a difference compared to similar power non-flexful batteries, but with real quantitative watts and torque differences to settle that score. This is a dyno brake, like literally, it's just a brake caliper and disc mounted with a force gauge. One of the most old school and reliably precise methods of determining torque of, well, anything that spins really, like engines, which when used with RPM can determine horsepower, but we got something else for that metric. And it even works in static form with a torque wrench to check that it's working, like with 50 foot pounds here. Regardless of the orientation of the force gauge sensor, as long as it's zeroed, as shown here, or shooting for 75 foot-pounds now, this thing is bang on every time. And that's because the sensor is hooked up exactly 12 inches from the center axis of this whole rig, so one pound of force here is exactly one foot-pound. This is version 3 and by far the best and most repeatable of the dyno brakes we've made, with measurement parts and design from me, but the prototyping, ingenuity, and fabric cobbling by our boy Logan, part of the TTC team best known for his work on our gas-powered impact creations. This is the brake assembly from a Goldwing motorcycle, mounted on a precision ground shaft with brackets so that the caliper and disc can both spin freely. Even fully completed, this whole thing spins super nicely. Then using a master cylinder from a Toyota pickup and brake line from a Chevy OBS truck, we can gradually apply load at the caliper by applying brake pressure until the drill stalls. Now it's gonna be important for you to understand that while unintuitive, the specific amount of brake pressure applied to the brake pad and its brake pad condition is always irrelevant on a setup like this. All the magic sort of happens up here. You could clamp down on this disc with your fingers and as long as you had enough finger pushing power to squeeze and stall the drill, you'd get the same number as long as it was pushing up against this caliper as you did it. Brand new pads, more aggressive pads, heck even spraying this thing with penetrating oil all yield the same results, which we test multiple times and show you the median test from. So let's get into it. Today we have for you simply two drills we own and have been using for dialing in these dyno designs over the past few months. But don't worry, if you guys like these, I'm sure we can add tons more over time and new models as they come out. We got the DCD 999 Flexful Advantage Hammer Drill from DeWalt, which is rated at 1219 UWO, or unit watts out, which is their highest rating by the numbers drill, but some argue there may be at least one other out there from DeWalt that can beat it. And here we have our trusty Milwaukee 2804 rated for 1200 inch pounds. It's a shorter tool than the DeWalt, though many say similar power level, and in its kitted form, how they come, that difference is pushed even further by the weight difference between these two tools, the Milwaukee being 4 pounds 12 ounces versus 5 pounds 14 and a half ounces for the DeWalt. Which will put the Milwaukee out to an early lead just by gravitational forces alone. There's also a later model that has come out from Milwaukee recently, and we can buy that too if you want to see it. But right off the hop, we have to talk about the specs race most brands are taking part of with these inch pounds. 1200 inch pounds is 100 foot pounds, 136 Newton meters. And that's not like ugga dugga foot pounds where it generates that from intermittent hammer blows. That's linear, all applied to you at once types of torque, which isn't felt as simply 100 foot pounds either. Your hand isn't one foot away from the center axis of this tool. You're holding it here four inches away from the center. That's a full 300 pounds working against your hand. 
I know these things come with handles, but I think most of us have stalled out one of these things just while using it in your hand. And I like to think of myself as manly, but I didn't have no 300 pounds behind my elbow when it happened. We're gonna test these as they come in kits, which is the pricing we'll use for now as well. The 2804 comes with an XC 5.0, so that's up first, though we'll also include the next up in batteries for performance as well. Here's the M18 in high on the dyno. Thirteen point eight foot pounds. That's one hundred and sixty seven inch pounds, albeit still in high RPM. I've noticed this drill stopping quite a few times when drilling holes above three eight seven sixteenths. It can be kind of annoying for something rated at a hundred foot pounds. Here's the XE six point oh high output. We've had a lot of luck with in our testing on other tools. So 17.55 foot pounds or 211 inch pounds, a nice gain from that battery swap. And now here's on low where things should be more geared for torque. Just 28.9 foot pounds, and that was a median of about 10 runs. This thing, whether the force sensor is set up to read in positive or negative orientation, is pretty consistent. Before we get out the pitchfork, so here's the tool with an XC 6.0. I'd never use one of these with an HD 12.0 hanging off the end, and the 6.0 has shown higher peak output for us than the XC 8.0. Forty five point eight five, forty five point nine foot pounds, a huge increase over the XC 5.0 battery, really. And we saw this time and time again over the five amp hour. But that's still five hundred and fifty one inch pounds, not twelve hundred, which lines up with our experience when stalling these things out. That's still near one hundred and forty pounds at your wrist, four inches away from the action. So while the specs might be pumped up a bit from marketing wank that runs the world nowadays, this is still a very powerful drill. On smaller drills, when prototyping this dyno, we were seeing 10 foot pounds. My old NICAD DeWalt was seeing seven and a half, eight foot pounds. Speaking of DeWalt, they've come a long way since the NICAD days. Here's the DCD 999, which is a flexible advantage tool and thus comes with a six amp hour flexible battery, but does currently cost about $80, $90 more than the Milwaukee kit. Here's it in high with the six amp hour flexible. Seventeen point six foot pounds, but maybe you just bought the bare tool and just want to run it on a standard five amp hour XR battery, no flex volt fuss. Here's that. Sixteen point five five foot pounds, and we saw that in forward and reverse. If that's info that's useful to you, not a huge change. Here's the new five amp hour power stack. 17.1 foot pounds, similar to the six amp hour flex volt. And here's the six amp hour XR, which is non flex volt. 18.55, so a bit of a gain over the flex volt on the flex volt advantage tool. Hmm. DeWalt's nine amp hour is flex volt and is a ton of high discharge 21700s though. It's really the next step up in battery size over what the kit came with, like we showed with the Milwaukee. Let's see that. So in the numbers, maybe we're splitting hairs here, but all of these made more than the Milwaukee did from a longer, larger tool, of course. I think where we're gonna see the most difference is with lower RPM, higher numbers type of torque. Here's what the kit battery six amp hour flex volt does. Thirty six foot pounds even around 20 percent up on the Milwaukee's kit form. But let's see if that's due to battery selection. Here's the five amp hour XR that's comparable to the Milwaukee's. Thirty four foot pounds. So yep, in both tools with a five amp hour, the DeWalt has the edge. 
but still not approaching Milwaukee's peak of 46 foot-pounds yet. Let's see the 6 amp hour XR. The XR battery makes more, again, 38.2 foot-pounds. Here's the next size up 9 amp hour flex volt. The same 38.1, and the power stack made its peak torque of 37.75. This drill is an interesting one, both consistent and not fussy about battery type, from one of the few tools I've seen to have a battery type as part of its name. Flexvolt Advantage, and yet a 6 amp hour XR does better than a 6 amp hour Flexvolt, and at least on this tool is indistinguishable from a 9 amp hour Flexvolt so far. Maybe Home Depot just had to have their exclusive model be special for some reason and therefore is paired with Flexvolt. The Milwaukee when using high output batteries that don't come with it beat the DeWalt in torque and the points will reflect that here. Each foot pound is a point and we're scoring both the battery it comes with as well as the next option up which for the DeWalt is either the 6 amp hour XR or 9 amp hour Flexvolt. Same points either way here they scored similarly. But the Milwaukee does this all with a shorter tool. That's when using this formula for torque and length, a score of 133 for the DeWalt and 153.9 for the shorter Milwaukee. Though so far we've been perhaps using the wrong yardstick to measure that DeWalt. If you ask them, peak torque is sort of whack. For one, it's gotten so inflated in the specs that it doesn't really mean anything anymore. And as we've shown, that's sort of true, but for another, the torque to make your drill stall might not be super useful for you to know. If you're drilling something and the tool makes piles and piles of torque, but is slowing to 100 RPM or so, that might be sort of useless to you when you're drilling a hole, especially in metal for us. A drill might peak in torque at say 20, 50 RPM when it's not really doing much work. So DeWalt wanted to make torque and RPM together, almost like horsepower or watts as they say, which is both speed and torque, or as we'll be showing, volts and amps. And we bought several motors in various working RPM ranges to figure out once these are spun as generators for watts out, which these drills might perform best with in high and low, and with future drills as well. This won't give us an exact readout due to efficiency losses and curves, but we've been able to determine from months of testing, more powerful drills and better batteries, or higher charge batteries, always make more than otherwise it seems to be pretty consistent. Up first is the Milwaukee Low on our low RPM dyno motor. The XC 5.0 was able to make about as much as 330 watts here before bogging down. But when pulling amps alone as a load, which we try to do as well to see which makes most, it makes 340, about the same. But with a six amp hour high output, as we saw with the dyno brake as well, the tool really wakes up. With a six amp hour, the Milwaukee powers through 400s past 450 watts, past 460, and even at 470, 480, we find it can be stable if the battery is fully charged, but each time would cut out at 490 watts in low. On the DeWalt now in low, we find the battery included with the tool, the 6 amp hour flex with 18650s inside it. The tool is very happy with 460 watts, but above that would start to dive in RPM pretty steadily. The 5 amp hour power stack we find does similarly, 460, maybe 470 watts. Only the 9 amp hour could make a real difference, we saw as much as 510, 520 watts would make it dive, whereas on the Milwaukee an old school 9 amp hour saw the same performance as a 6 amp hour battery, sometimes less. With the 5 amp hour XR on the other end of this tool and directly comparing now to the XC 5.0 from Milwaukee, it can do only 340 watts maybe 345 watts when pulling amps alone. About the same as the Milwaukee can, which is probably why they don't sell it with that battery. So keep that in mind if you're using the tool in low speed, which is actually a good takeaway I think here. If we're talking low speed, low speed settings, with a five amp hour, both tools make the same watts. And with any battery, the Milwaukee makes more torque in that low speed setting. So on half inch lags, huge hole saws, it's looking like Milwaukee is the choice here, especially with high output batteries. All right, our last testing series before we total these points, both tools in high for drilling. If watts is like horsepower and that's what DeWalt focuses on, then higher RPM should be where things shine here. I mean, despite being the same motors inside with just different gear ratios, but you get what I mean. Here's how they compare. The Milwaukee with a five amp hour likes low 400s, 440 watts, 
Beyond that, it gets real sluggish and can't recover. And we see a similar percentage bump up in performance yet again with our favorite M18 battery, the 6 amp hour, making well into the 600s in watts here. We found 640 was good. Beyond that, we couldn't really get it reliably going. Now the DeWalt, the yellow tool likes its RPM. It's geared a bit higher in general. And with unit watts out ratings, they rank these tools to be based on productivity, not just low RPM torque. With the included flexible battery, it makes a full 670 watts in high. Not to be outdone, a 6 amp hour just standard XR battery can do a smidge more, 680, sometimes 690 watts at the same RPM. The power stack is a weird one to test. It makes less RPM total under load, but was able to sustain the RPM without diving like the others did. Just more comfortable providing those high amps without just increasingly slowing the tool down. 700 watts. So that's what we'll use for the next step up in performance. Battery wise here, you'd certainly use this in place of a nine amp hour where you can. So the DeWalt scores high in the higher RPM category, like it did over here as well. They seem to focus on that stuff in the specs. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise, I suppose. And that makes for some good points. Though it's at the cost of length and weight, let's see how that looks. As a function of its average watts made and its length, the DCD 999 gets a 141, and the Milwaukee gets a 137.7, very similar per inch, all told. Though while the Milwaukee only comes with an XC 5.0, that does help to keep its price down, however. Normally we do bare tool prices here so that we can better compare it to air tools, but we won't be testing those here, and some drills are only sold in kits, so that will help in this case. As a function of overall performance and price, 85.1 points for the DeWalt and 112.8 for the lower priced M18 kit, totaling 645.1 and 654.4, putting the Milwaukee out front, though not by much. We normally try to have this side of the chart, which is all of its power figures, be pretty balanced with this side of the chart, which is a function of those power figures and length or price or whatever it may be. A tool that costs less or is smaller but makes similar power should edge out the competition when that makes sense. Having used Milwaukee models like this one for a few years and the DeWalt for a few months now, I'd agree with the standings. They are close enough that if you see a sale on the DeWalt, it would probably come out front. The Milwaukee does cut out more at high speed when drilling in steel above 3 8 half inch I find, so I use DeWalt in those scenarios where I have the space for it. But the low RPM torque of the Milwaukee shines through and I prefer its chuck just personally. This first episode is sort of just a proof of concept, suggests more drills that can possibly take these down in future testing. Thanks for watching.